Seven happenings that indicate your isolation phase is ending during spiritual awakening. Everyone, if you've been keeping up with my content about spiritual awakening, then you know that after experiencing a spiritual awakening, many people enter a phase of isolation. Sometimes you're just basking in your newfound happiness, but at times, you may be thrown into a lucid dream. And in that dream, you're told to start preparing for something big. So you start working in silence, keeping to yourself, as you continue to prepare for the unknown. But then, you start feeling these little nudges. These small, yet undeniable signals that tell you that the end of this isolation phase is near. Maybe you're going through something similar where you feel as though you're about to come out of your isolation phase, or at least that's what you're sensing. If that's the case, then this one's for you. Today, let me share with you the seven signs that I noticed as my isolation phase reached its end. As the end approached, I noticed that I was entering a period of great creativity. Ideas and inspiration flow freely, as if I had tapped into a universal well. It was like a bolt of lightning in the middle of a storm. I felt a deep sense of purpose, an undeniable knowing that I was meant to do something special. So if you're in the midst of your isolation phase, take heart. Pay attention to these signs and trust in the process. The end is near, and something amazing awaits you on the other side. Now let's begin. Number one, a new chapter is waiting for you. Have you ever felt the energy in your life shift, like you're at the end of one massive chapter? And it's time to turn the page and start anew. That's precisely how I felt, as though the air around me vibrated with the promise of transformation, like an entirely different cycle was starting. This was not just some fleeting notion. It was a deep, profound sense of knowing that intensified with each passing day. And hey, maybe you're feeling it too. Perhaps you notice that you have become a different person, the way you think, how you treat people, how you stand your ground and trust your gut. It's almost like you have been reborn. Sure, maybe your outside world hasn't changed yet, but you sense that something deep within you has shifted significantly, and that's where the magic happens. Sign number two, your so-called isolation cave crumbles. Have you ever felt like you needed to be alone, to retreat to a cozy, safe space where you could hide away from the world? That's what my home felt like during my isolation phase. It was a little haven, surrounded by nature, with so much beauty and tranquility right outside my doorstep. Every part of me was contented with this world, but there was something stirring in my soul that I couldn't ignore. As the weeks went by, this feeling of discontent grew stronger and louder, like a warning that something was about to change. I pushed it away, thinking that it was just my mind playing tricks on me, but I was wrong. Suddenly, things started to fall apart. It was unbearable. Our little sanctuary was no more, and it was clear to me that the time had come to leave. Just like that, we packed up our things and left, moving on to a new, unfamiliar space. It wasn't easy, but I knew that it was necessary to make this change. I've learned that when you ignore those whispers of intuition, the universe has a way of taking matters into its own hands, forcing you to move and grow in ways you never thought possible. Sign number three, you're a boundary-setting queen. You know those people who always seem to have their boundaries set straight, like they know exactly what they want and won't let anyone infringe on their personal space. That was never me, not until recently at least. You see, when you're in the midst of an isolation phase, it's usually because you've spent too much time catering to everyone else's needs, leaving no time for yourself. I know that feeling all too well. I used to be the one people would turn to, the one who would always put others' needs before my own. It was exhausting, and it left me feeling drained and overwhelmed. But here's the thing. When you're in isolation, you have no one else to please but yourself, and that's when the real magic happens. That's when you get to set clear boundaries and say no without feeling guilty or selfish. Learning how to establish healthy boundaries is tough work, but it's crucial if you want to make real progress on your spiritual journey. It's about learning to prioritize your needs and figuring out what makes you feel whole and nourished. It's about realizing that you are worthy of love and respect and that it's okay to put yourself first. So if you're feeling like a boundary-setting queen lately, embrace it. This sign means you're well on your way to breaking out of isolation and stepping into your power. 4. 
you feel squished, uncomfortable or lonely in your own digs. All I remember was stepping out of my comfort zone back when I was leaving my shell and realizing something wasn't right. The once cozy den of mine that had always felt like home was now confining me to the point of suffocation. It was like a switch had flicked in my head, telling me I needed to break free from the mundane and step out into the great unknown. This restless feeling that had taken up residence inside of me wasn't like anything I had ever felt before, and I knew it was time to ditch my cloistered ways. It's not like I was unhappy before, either. I'm usually pretty upbeat and easygoing. But all of a sudden, I started feeling caged in my own little sanctuary. It was like my environment wasn't keeping up with my mindset and flexibility, a claustrophobic trap that no longer suited the person I was becoming. 5. You're no more feeling drained even though you're in a crowd. I know the feeling of avoiding crowds like the plague all too well. Back in my isolation days, I made a point to avoid anything and everything that involved more than one person. Grocery shopping, mission accomplished in an empty store, walking on a scenic trail, cue the awkward, fast-paced backpedaling action. Nope, no thank you. But it was like the end of that phase jarred something awake in me that had been dormant for a long time. Suddenly, it was invigorating to be sharing a space with other people. I'm talking coffee shops, bustling city streets, even just striking up a conversation with a stranger on a bench outside. And like actual chit-chatting. Small talk had always made me feel a little on edge in the past, like I had my protective shields up. Now, it feels like I'm finally waking up and joining the world again, like finding the missing piece to a puzzle I didn't even know I was working on. Nowadays, I don't feel like I'm just a lone wolf operating on the fringes of society. I'm, dare I say it, enjoying being a part of it all, living and laughing and feeling alive among my fellow humans. 6. You start taking care of your appearance. Believe me when I say that, while I was still wallowing in my self-imposed seclusion, my appearance wasn't up there on the priority list. Messy hair, stretched out garb, and minimal personal grooming were my bread and butter. I wear clothes to serve myself rather than anyone else. But as I felt myself starting to come back into the world, I began to care again about how I looked to others. It's funny, because I always thought putting effort into appearance was a shallow thing, something that was totally inconsequential. Yet, as soon as I saw myself looking polished and put together again, it felt like coming to the surface after being underwater for too long. I actually made an attempt to try on different outfits instead of just stretching on the same old, same old. It became something fun and enjoyable and creative outlet, and no longer a chore to my tired brain. Maybe all that time spent alone had given me a chance to release my inner sense, who knows. Sign number seven. You're ready to unleash your true calling. You feel like you were meant for something great, like there was a purpose to your life, even though you couldn't quite put your finger on it at the moment. That's exactly how I felt during my isolation phase. I had this nagging feeling that there was something more I needed to do, something that would fulfill me in ways I could never have imagined. And then one day, it hit me like a ton of bricks. I had this vivid dream where I was told to prepare to work on something big, something that would change my life forever. It took years of hard work and dedication, but eventually, I'm ready to share with the world. And then, almost like magic, things started to happen. I started to feel like I was being nudged out of isolation and into the world. Signs began to appear, like small glimpses of the life I was meant to lead. It was exhilarating and scary all at once. But I knew that I was ready for this, that I had been preparing for it my whole life. So if you're feeling those inner urgings to make a change, to unleash your true calling, embrace them. Follow your instincts, even if they seem scary or impossible. I promise you, the universe has a way of guiding you towards the life you're meant to lead, if you're willing to trust and take the leap of faith. So until next time, have a nice day. So everyone, the journey of spiritual awakening can often be a lonely and isolating experience. It can feel like you are standing on the edge of a fast unending abyss 
with no one to turn to or guide you through the turbulence. The isolation phase of spiritual awakening is a crucial part of the process but is often the most difficult. The journey requires introspection and the task of facing your innermost self can be daunting even for the most experienced of spiritual seekers. During the isolation phase, one can often feel lost and alone with their thoughts as their only companion. The mind can become a labyrinth of interwaving thoughts, it's one leading down a different path, creating a cacophony of confusion and frustration. It is during this time that the perplexity of one's thoughts can become overwhelming. The mind becomes a complex web of emotions, experiences and memories, it's one vying for attention and contemplation. The overwhelming nature of the isolation phase can lead to a strange burstiness of emotions. One moment you are consumed by feelings of hopelessness and despair, and the next, a wave of joy and love washes over you, leaving you dizzy with conflicting emotions. But, despite the challenges, the isolation phase can also be a time of deep introspection and self-discovery. It is a time to confront that which we have held inside for far too long, to embrace our fears and weaknesses and turn them into sources of strength. And as we delve deeper into the isolation phase, we begin to see the interconnectedness of all things, we realize that our experiences and emotions are not just our own but are shared by all those who have walked this path before us. It's during this time that we start to find our voices and our purpose. We begin to grasp the importance of sharing our stories, our perspectives, and our insights with others who may be struggling with their own journey. The isolation phase is a transformative experience, one that requires patience, resilience, and acceptance. It is time to embrace the unknown, to trust the process, and to allow ourselves to be vulnerable. And through the journey of spiritual awakening, we learn to let go of our egos, our prejudices, and our judgments. We learn to embrace the interconnectedness of all things and the power of love, compassion, and kindness. So, if you find yourself in the midst of the isolation phase, know that you are not alone, you are not the first to go through this process, and you won't be the last. Take comfort in the knowledge that this time of perplexity and burstiness is just a stepping stone towards your higher self. So, embrace it, breathe through it. And know that on the other side lies a deeper understanding of yourself, your place in the world, and the infinite possibilities of the universe. Well, I hope you find this video informative, and if you have anything to say, please don't hesitate to write them down in the comment section below. Please subscribe to this channel if this is your first time here, and until next time, have a nice day everyone.